So I'm going to talk about, uh, give you a specific story we can really bite into about the, the wealth of partnerships and how they can help us expand our reach and also help us self-reflect, right? This is an important piece of if we are going to break down barriers to participation, we first need to understand what those barriers are. So let's talk about healthy food access and food security. Um, this project, the lens of this project is a great example of what can happen when we bring in partners that are already working and thinking about these, these areas that we want to address. So the Cooperative Fund in New England what, had opportunities for channeling government funding to food co-ops if food co-ops could only demonstrate that they had a role to play in food security. Guess what people were saying at the federal government level? No, co-ops don't have a role in that. Co-ops are exclusive, expensive, and irrelevant to food security. Um, so Cooperative Fund in New England approached us and said, well, we know that's not the story, but can you help us prove it? And this is where the association, right, the partnerships of our food co-ops and the neighboring food co-op association, we said, hell yes, we can prove it. So we convened people in a group and said, what are the programs in place that you are doing to make healthy food more accessible to your communities, to make ownership more accessible? And that launched this project that's been going on now for over five years and looking into how can we be more inclusive? How can we make sure that everyone in our communities can afford to eat? And the Great Recession was a great spur to that for a number of our members that then demanded of their board, hey, we gotta do something about this. Um, and so the next partner we looked to was, and that our food co-op said, well, we're already working with these statewide anti-hunger agencies that are thinking about this every day, that are working directly with the people that we most hope to serve. Um, and so Hunger Free Vermont became a project partner and they helped our co-ops learn about food insecurity and malnutrition and SNAP and WIC and um, benefits that our shoppers were interested in being able to use at our co-ops. Um, and you might not think off, right off the bat that the New England Farmers Union would be the, another natural first partner, but this is a group of family farmers, small family farmers, a lot of whom sell to our food co-ops, right? They care about everyone being able to access locally grown products. They want to be able to feed themselves, their families, and everyone in the community as well. So um, that, that's just one example of these organizational partnerships that help us really broaden our reach with this program. And our co-ops coming together with, had a huge impact. Um, in, we developed monthly planning calls where people from all over the region, a number of you in this room, were on these calls talking about how can we roll out these new needs-based discount programs? What are the barriers? Is it going to cost too much money? And so this is a story of three co-ops that are um, in a little triangle on the Vermont, Massachusetts, and uh, New Hampshire borders. And so three of the co-ops on the calls were in like 30 miles driving of each other. Um, the new co-op on the block, right, Monadnock Food Co-op, the small and older co-op, Putney Food Co-op, and Brattleboro Food Co-op, um, who had expanded recently. So. Uh, here's a story about what each of them took when they were rolling out these programs. The Monadnock Food Co-op had just opened its doors, and from right off the bat, they did not have discounts rolled out. So they thought, if we're going to roll out a discount, we want it to be based on need. So within a year of opening their doors, they had the Healthy Food for All program rolled out. And they saw that, you know, as Michael referenced, it was a really important piece of addressing the community concern about affordability. Um, and part of launching, we thought about, okay, if all of our co-ops could announce together and launch together and streamline our resources, what could we accomplish? So Monadnock said, hey, let's launch a screening of A Place at the Table. Has anyone seen that movie? Um, which really tied into the national anti-hunger advocacy work. And so because Monadnock brought this up, 12 other co-ops ended up doing these same screenings. And Having community dialogues, which was as important as launching these programs, bringing people together, demonstrating co-ops leading in addressing food insecurity. Um, Brattleboro Food Co-op uh, really took this opportunity. You know, they had been doing lots of community donations for years, but they took this opportunity to think about, we need to go out and sit and listen and learn. Joining the board of um, Local Food Shelf and going out and really deepening relationships and learning things like, if we're designing all of these recipes to be cooked on a budget and they involve a stove, that is a barrier. So the um, staff member at a local community kitchen said, let's make these crock pot recipes. You know, someone else referenced that. Just something that subtle. And the Putney Co-op completely transformed their entire communication strategy. 
they brought in an intern when they were rolling out this program who looked at all of our food co-ops, probably many of you in the room, looked at our websites and analyzed the, the reading level. And the average reading level was 12th grade. That is not accessible. Sixth grade reading level is accessible communication. So knowing that, especially for families speaking English as a second language, that's pretty important to look at. So Putney Food Co-op took that back as a reflection and totally transformed their communications and their marketing strategy. Um, so that's an example. And then other co-ops on the calls were like, oh, holy crap, we should probably analyze our reading level. What can we do about that? So that was a great example of how the co-ops learn from each other. Um, and you know, we've talked today about expanding our reach. Why should our, folks, our food co-ops focus on food security? Because we're well positioned to. We are well positioned to learn who is who our community is and how can we better serve their unmet needs, right? That's the reason we exist. We provide important healthy food access points and doing this food security work is a really important opportunity for us to differentiate ourselves and to talk about our competitive and our cooperative advantage. Um, and I'll talk about a little bit about what that is. And to grow our membership and to grow our sales. Um, and also, look in your ends, look in your, uh, food security is woven into the mo our movement from the very beginning. So um, thinking about who we're excluding, it's really important to bring in partners, right? So who should be evaluating how well we're doing when we're doing new programs or how inclusive we're being? That The video from Duluth was a great example of that. We think we can be doing a lot of inclusive things, but how do we know if we don't ground truth, right? So our partners helped us identify obstacles to participation. Why aren't people walking through the doors of our co-op? So these are just some of them, and I'm sure we're leaving some out, right? But ask your partners, ask the community, um, the community that you're hoping to serve. So in our case, that was participants on the Food for All needs based discount programs, community partners, we asked. Um, what are other obstacles you're seeing that we're not thinking of? And one of the things that came, the tools that came out of this that our members asked us to create was an audit. How do we assess how inclusive we are? And um, one of the, this was, and also how do we do this on a more regular basis once we roll these programs out? So I want you to raise your hand, not to put you on the spot, but to put you on the spot. How many co-ops in here have measures in place to make member, member ownership more accessible? Good, great. Um, and how many co-ops here have international foods representing the different cultures and ethnic groups in your community? Smattering, okay. How many people could grow in that area? Should be everyone, right? Yeah. Um, how many people's uh, signage, I'll say signage and marketing in general, use accessible language and are translated into other languages? Okay, it looks like an area for growth in the room. So these are an examples of some of the questions asked so that, um, and that our, our partners helped us identify. And this, we've gone through three iterations of this and had two cooperative interns working with us um, and developing one of these for startups. So when startups open their doors, they can be well prepared to think about what barriers are we placing to people being able to participate in our co-op. And um, a result of this program was that, you know, our member food co-ops now rolled out a number of new needs-based discount programs. 13 of our food co-ops rolled out these programs in just over a year. And together, when we measured how much, what the, what the um, impact of that was, there was over almost $4 million in sales to the participants in these programs, and um, also membership growth. One of our co-ops represented in this room, half of their new members that are coming in and joining right now are through the Food for All program. That is a sign, right? That these are people, in our, there are people in our communities that would like to access our co-ops and would like to use them more if only given the opportunity and if only we can facilitate the removal of those barriers. Member ownership is key and accessing, accessing that is key. It's key to maintaining community control and to ensuring that the co-op meets needs. So, if marginalized community members cannot access membership, ownership, and control, how can we serve them? And if government, government benefits go away, you know, if, if our needs-based discount programs are only based on if you qualify for WIC or SNAP, what have you benefited? So I think just 
knowing how important accessing member ownership is key, it's also our co-op difference and our competitive advantage. All of our competitors now can do what we're doing and better, right? In many areas because of volume and because of a number of things. But we, who owns our co-ops and who can participate in them and have a say, run for the board of directors, that is a unique advantage and key to these programs of access. And I think we have to really make sure that this woven into everything. And we have to talk about it because that's, that's what makes us different. And um, I think an, an important piece of this as well is keep repeating this cycle, right? Look at who's not at the table. If you roll out a new program, it doesn't matter if it's a plastic program or if it's a solar program or if it's a needs-based discount program. Think about, um, you know, how does this tie into our purpose Who's not at the table to access and benefit from this program? And how can we continue this work and reassessing? So the healthy food access programs, um, we work with our co-ops. And this year, we're going to work to do help our co-ops audit their programs. And so we're doing it every year and continuously learning to make sure that there are not new barriers that have come up that we cannot address. So what are the results of this work, right? What happens when we partner and come together as an association of food co-ops? Um, there were nine new needs based discount programs rolled out in one year, significant growth in membership, and our co-ops communicated this in a couple of ways, too. Um, some of our co-ops saw that the participants in their needs-based discount programs were shopping more, you know, doubling their basket size because of this discount. Others were seeing new members coming in the door. Um, also, a change in perception as a result. That, and I'll, I'll give you a, share, a story that, that also ties to advocacy. So because of our partnership with Hunger Free Vermont, I got an email from Faye um, early in the morning saying, hey, there's a very crappy bill going in front of the, the Senate in New Hampshire. It's going to restrict eligibility to SNAP and WIC severely, cutting SNAP and WIC for 17,000 families in New Hampshire and $60,000 in groceries, you know, that they'd be able to spend to buy groceries. Can you please help? Within the end of that day, all of our New Hampshire co-ops had prepared op-eds, and one of them agreed to testify on the floor the next day. They were the only grocery store represented testifying against the cuts in these programs. And they were seen as a leader in food security from the legal aid in New Hampshire, from the food bank, from all these food security organizations that frankly did not see co-ops doing anything in food security. They just didn't know. So let's take this opportunity of leveraging our relationships among our, our community of co-ops and also our partners so that we can continue doing this and standing up and and this is just one story of healthy food access, but where are the other areas that we can use these partnerships to um, make a difference to really deepen our engagement in other areas of widening the circle of who we serve, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and continue, um, continue learning and growing and pushing ourselves as a community to move forward and to widen our circle of we. Thank you very much. <laughs>